In this video lesson, we will learn how to find the vertex of quadratic functions without using a graph. So if you're given a formula of a quadratic function, how do you find its vertex? Well, this depends on which form of a quadratic function you get. So let's just take the first example in the standard form. y equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. So this is indeed standard form. We have our x squared with some sort of multiple, negative 3, and x with multiple plus 6, and c, minus 2, the constant. So in general, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. But in our case, we have specific a is negative 3, b is 6, and c is negative 2. And the formula is that the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative b over 2a, or in our case, negative 6 over 2 times negative 3. We just took the numbers right out of the equation and plugged them into this other equation. So we get that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 1. So now that we have the x-coordinate, how do we find the y-coordinate? Well, it's actually really convenient. We're already given our formula, y equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. So if you plug in the x-coordinate of the vertex into this equation, then we'll get the y-coordinate of the same vertex. So we plug in x equals 1 negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 2 equals negative 3 plus 6 minus 2, which are the same as 6 minus 5, which is just 1. So we get that the y coordinate of the vertex, yv, equals 1. So there's our answer, and we can write it down as a point, 1 comma 1 coordinate pair. So now let's look at the graph of this function that is made by a computer and see if we're right. Here's the graph. And notice the function is right, negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. And here's the vertex where the quadratic function turns around. I've labeled it now. Well, if we look at its coordinates, it is indeed 1 comma 1. As we calculated before, its x-coordinate is 1 and its y-coordinate is 1. So our answer is correct. And I'd like to highlight again what the formula we used was. The formula is for the x-coordinate of the vertex. We get the y-coordinate by plugging it into the equation. And the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a, where b is the coefficient of the x term and a is the coefficient of the x squared term. Now we're going to move on to our second example. So quickly let me erase everything on the board. And the next example is not going to be with standard form but it's going to be with root form. So let's take the function y equals x minus 1 times x minus 3. I'm going to get rid of that graph. We don't need it anymore. So this is obviously in root form. We have x minus something times x minus something else. And we're not adding anything or anything else. We just have x and something times x and something else. In general, it's y equals... And I'm going to just make these little underlines. That means any number. We can have any two numbers there, and we can also multiply the whole thing by a number. In our case, we have the numbers 1, 1, and 3. But in general, you could write it as C, A, and B. So we have C equals 1 because we don't have anything multiplied out in front, not, not any numbers. And we have minus 1 and minus 3, so a and b are 1 and 3. 
So we need another formula to find the vertex of this parabola. And now the formula is a plus b over 2, which in our case is just 1 plus 3 over 2. And this is, again, this is the x-coordinate of the vertex. 1 plus 3 over 2 is 4 over 2 is just 2. So we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is 2. And don't get confused. We're still using the letters a and b, but they mean different things in standard form and in root form. So when we have it in root form like this, we do a plus b over 2. But if you have standard form, look at the other formula earlier in the video. So I get yv equals, and we have to plug in, we just have to plug in xv into our formula, and we know that xv is 2. So we get 2 minus 1, which is 1, times 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, which is just, when we multiply it, we get negative 1. So the y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. So we get the point 2, negative 1. Now again, we're going to have the computer graph this parabola for us, and we're going to make sure that 2, negative 1 is indeed the vertex. This is actually a, a pretty good strategy for, say, homework assignments when you can use a graphing calculator. But the idea is to check your answer, not to find it this way, because on a test you're not always allowed to use a calculator. So here we see on the graph that the vertex is indeed the point 2, negative 1. So our answer was right. And the x-coordinate is 2, and y-coordinate is negative 1. Because it's 2 to the right and 1 below the origin. So now we're ready to move on to our third and last example. This final example is going to be a parabola or a quadratic function written in vertex form. Now I'm just reminding you that when you have root form, you have something times x minus something times x minus something else. You have to add those two things that the act are being subtracted from x and divide by 2. y equals negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3 is our new example. And this is indeed in vertex form. I'd like to say, now that there's a moment, it's a good idea if you want to remember these formulas to just go back to the places in this video where they're written down and just copy them. That way you'll have them all ready. Now, okay. Vertex form always has something times x minus something squared plus a constant. Here we've written, instead of those somethings, we've written c, h, and k. And the trick is that for vertex form, it's actually really easy to find the vertex. That's why it's called the vertex form, is that the vertex is just the h and the k, as I've labeled them in this general function, or in our case, since we're doing minus 1, the x-coordinate is 1, and the y-coordinate is just the plus 3. So we get the point 1, 3. So as before, we're going to use a computer or a calculator to check our answer. So here's the graph, and there's the vertex, the point where the parabola turns around. So indeed has the coordinates 1 comma 3. Its x coordinate is going to be 1. Oh, and I apologize, I wrote incorrectly here. It's not vx, it's xv, and same with y. That's what I meant. But we have xv equals 1 and yv equals 3. But in any case, thank you for watching this video lecture, and I hope it helped.